Hello, I'm Amy Esther and welcome to my channel. This is a little bit different than the normal videos that I do. Typically, I make videos about life with chronic illness for people who live chronically ill. Today's video, however, is for the friends and family of people who live chronically ill. So if you are the sister, friend, mother, husband, wife, cousin, neighbor, whatever of someone who lives chronically ill, this video is for you. Hey, and welcome to my channel. I usually say, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And maybe you want to, maybe you wanna subscribe to my channel and learn more about life with chronic illness, but I'd recommend sending your friend or family member who lives chronically ill to subscribe so that they can learn tips and tricks on how to live a beautiful, happy life while living chronically ill. Today, we're talking to the friends and family. I did a video for people living chronically ill on how to talk to their friends and family. And I get so many questions about this that I thought we need to also talk to the friends and family. And although my main tip in that video is to allow our friends and family members to have their own thoughts and feelings, I still think it's important to talk to you guys and let you know from the perspective of someone who lives chronically ill, some things that you can do to maybe help those around you who are suffering. So for this video, I am going to say us and we talking about people who live chronically ill, but just know that this is my own thoughts. This is me and your person might think differently. But my number one advice for you is to talk to your person, talk to your friend or your daughter or your wife or whoever it is that is suffering, ask them how they would like to be treated, ask them things that you can do to help and things that you've done that maybe have been more hurtful. See from their perspective what works, but you can use some of these tips to at least get you started. And of course, everyone is different. Uh, one more disclaimer, I am not a doctor or a medical professional, so make sure you seek out uh, a professional if you're looking for more help with like any kind of treatment or anything like that. So what is it like inside the head of someone who lives chronically ill? First of all, we are so frustrated <laughs> with our bodies and with ourselves. We want to do so much more. We really do. We don't want to miss out on activities. We don't want to miss out on food and fun and things that we used to enjoy. We don't want to cancel on you last minute. We get so frustrated and annoyed and angry at ourselves and at our bodies that we can't control that it makes it a lot harder when there are other people outside of us who are adding on top of that. We want to be more social. In fact, we don't want any help. We don't want, I guess I should say, we don't want to need help. We want to be the ones helping you. We miss that. We hate complaining and we don't want to do it. <laughs> we just get so frustrated sometimes that we don't know what to do except just complain about it. And we lock it in. We try not to complain and it builds up and then it just comes out. <laughs> and sometimes that's every day. Sometimes that's every once in a while, but there are times where every single day we just are so frustrated and so annoyed at ourselves that we just want to get it out and complain about it. We just want someone to listen and hear us and not necessarily do anything about it, but just listen and let us complain because it's really healing sometimes to just vent and get it out. So no, we don't want to complain. In fact, <laughs> speaking for myself, of course, I always regret complaining and I always just wish I hadn't, but I think 
if I don't complain sometimes, I would go a little crazy. <laughs> the other thing we really want you to know is that we didn't ask for this. We don't want it. We hate it. We don't want to be missing out on all this stuff. We don't want to be laying in bed a lot. We don't want to feel this way. And I think sometimes it comes across as we're making it worse than it is or we're exaggerating it. And of course that could be the case in some, in some, sometimes, but I would, speaking for myself and for many people that I know who live chronically ill, we are telling the truth and we are just in a lot of pain and it's really, really hard. So what do you do if you can't understand this and you can't empathize with a person who lives chronically ill? So just a few things to think about to maybe get you in a better headspace to understand what it feels like to live chronically ill. Of course, everyone has their own symptoms and, and we all have different things going on, but I, if you could just think about the last time you had the flu. Now, I wouldn't say go to like a normal cold where you just had a stuffy nose and maybe you just you felt achy and you had a few symptoms, but I'm talking about the flu where you have all the symptoms. <laughs> you're nauseous, you have a headache, you're achy all over your body, you have no energy, um, you your throat feels tight, you have a stomach ache, you don't want to eat anything, but you have to eat, and you just feel sick. You just feel lethargic and icky and all of these random symptoms all over your body. Think about that time and think about what went through your head. Probably something like, why is this happening to me right now? I had this event planned I wanted to go to. Um, I have to take off work for this or I have to work through this. Um, you might think things like, I just need to get through this week and then I'll feel better. You might think, I just need to take a nap right now. I just need to take care of myself right now. I'm going to cancel my plans. Those are some of the things you might think and of course others. So just take a minute and think about the last time you had an illness like this, a temporary illness that had a lot of varied symptoms. And what are some of the thoughts that went through your head? Now I want you to imagine that that illness and those symptoms that were all over your body and affected your work and affected your sleep and affected your social activities and affected your eating, imagine that never goes away, ever. <laughs> that is what it feels like to live chronically ill. And again, we all have our own symptoms. Uh, your person might have those symptoms of the flu. They might have totally different symptoms, but that's kind of what it feels like. You have symptoms all over your body and you just feel generally icky all over. And it's so hard to want to do anything. And it's frustrating because you've made plans and you can't go to them. And you want to baby yourself, but imagine those days where you're thinking, oh, I'll just take off work for a couple days and then I'll feel better. But imagine that you don't feel better. What do you do? Do you quit your job? Do you try to find a job from home? How do you make that work? That is what it's like to live chronically ill. Imagine eating the healthiest diet and having the most severe symptoms. Eating things that everyone claims are so good for you and having the worst stomach ache after. Every single time, not just for one day, not just for a week, but for years and years. Imagine that every time you roll out of bed, you feel like you didn't sleep at all. Every single night, you got no sleep. And at the same time of not getting any sleep, you also feel like you just finished an intense workout. 
and you haven't done anything yet today. And all you wanna do is crawl back into bed, not because you don't wanna start your day, not because you don't wanna go to work. In fact, the opposite, because you do wanna go to work, but your body hurts so bad that you just wanna curl up and lay in bed all day. But you can't because you don't just have a few sick days to get through, you have a life to get through. Imagine that every time you went to the grocery store, that was your energy for the entire day, maybe a few days. <laughs> Imagine that just a simple daily task of going to the grocery store, cleaning up after dinner, making dinner, doing the dishes, Imagine those take all of your energy for the day. Imagine that your favorite activity in the world is going hiking and all of your friends call you up and they say, we're all going hiking, we're so excited. And they invite you to come and you decide not to go, not because you don't want to, not because you don't wanna be with your friends, but because you know that if you go, you will be in bed for a week straight in pain and fatigued and no energy just by going and doing something that you enjoy. Or imagine that you have made plans with someone. It's something simple, just going and hanging out at someone's house and you cancel on them last minute and you feel so terrible, but you're not feeling well. And it's not that you are just got a bug and you got the flu, but that this has happened over and over and over again, and you have a constant fear that you're gonna lose all of your friends because you keep canceling on them. So imagine that every time you make plans, there is this fear behind it that you might have to cancel last minute because you will be sick. And not just that there is a chance, but there is a very high chance you will have to cancel on them again. Imagine that you can't work a full-time job without being extremely sick. Imagine that you go to school for four years, plus the 12 <laughs> at the beginning, four years of college, and this is just my personal story. You go to school for four years, you graduate, and you work for six months, and then you have to quit because you get so sick. Imagine that you can't work full time. Not that working is always fun. I know it's not always fun, but imagine that you can't and you have to find a way to help provide for your family. What do you do? So those are just some scenarios to think about <laughs> if you want to try and empathize with someone who's living chronically ill. And I know it's kind of sad and I'm not making this to seem sad and depressing and for us, my channel is all about empowering people who live chronically ill and showing that you can live a good life even if you can't work, even if you can't go to all the social activities. Uh, that is what my channel is about. So make sure you share with your people, your chronic illness people, <laughs> my channel if they want to know how to do that. But I think showing that side of it to people who are on the outside can help kind of get a better idea and help you to empathize when your person is complaining and your person is day after day struggling to get through the days and they are exhausted after five minutes of their day and you don't know how to even imagine what they're going through. Just think about some of those scenarios. Just imagine being sick all the time. <laughs> imagine you have the flu that never goes away. So what can you do to help? So the first thing, of course, is to ask them. Ask your person, how can I help you? What can I do? And let them tell you the best ways to help them. And maybe they just want to talk to you. Maybe they just need someone who listens and doesn't say anything. Maybe they want you to help them find solutions. Maybe it changes day after day and they don't really know but I mean, that's for me. I feel like I never really know. Some days I want to just have someone listen. Some days I want someone to tell me what to do. Some days I want to not talk about it at all and pretend it's not there. So 
ask them. Maybe day after day you have to ask them every single day what you can do to help them. But being open and, and communicating with them is the best way to really understand them. And maybe you won't fully understand what it's like for them, but at least the communication is there and so they know that they can go to you and that they can ask you when they do need help. My next tip is to ask them about what foods they can and cannot eat. Ask them about what activities they can and cannot do. Just make sure that you are aware of their needs and the things that they choose to do and the things they choose not to do because of their illness and try to accommodate for those the best you can. Try to accommodate for having the food that they can eat, have, having activities that they can do. However, on the opposite end, don't treat us like we are children. Don't treat us like we can't do anything for ourselves. Don't treat us like every single thing that happens has to be accommodated to us because then it puts all the pressure on us to one, then we feel like we have to enjoy everything. We have to go to all the activities. Maybe you've extra accommodated for a family vacation, but we have a flare up that week and we don't wanna go at all, then you're stuck with this accommodated vacation that we're not even gonna be at, right? So there's balance there. And I have seen both ends. I have had people who are acting like I'm complaining and that uh, my illness isn't real and trying to talk me out of my symptoms. And I've had people on the other end who treat me like I am a child and that I need to be watched over and that I need like everything accommodated to me and it's all about me. And that makes me feel uncomfortable as well. And I think a lot of us feel that way where there's the two extremes <laughs> and you want to be in the middle. You want to show that you care and that you love this person and that you're trying to accommodate for them, but without going too far, <laughs> if that makes sense. So love us, show us you care. And again, the communication is the big one. If you're communicating with us, if you're saying, hey, we're throwing this birthday party for uh, this friend and we're gonna accommodate the whole party to you. It's like, well, no, this is the friend's party. Yeah, sure, bring one dish that I can eat. Have one activity that I that it's good for me, but make the rest about that person because when you're too accommodating for me, it just feels kind of awkward for everyone, if that makes sense. So have a balance there because we do want you to try to help us but we don't wanna feel like we're a burden. And I think that's a very common feeling when you live chronically ill is to feel like you're a burden for people, to feel like it's an extra stress on everyone else. Like we're already frustrated ourselves and then we're extra frustrated because it's affecting other people. And we want everyone to still live a good life. We want you guys to still do what you want and to maybe do the activities that we can't do sometimes. So just don't treat us like we're incapable of doing anything because we can do things. We want to be able to help. We want to be able to um, contribute to whatever it is that's going on, whether it's in your family or friend group or neighborhood, we wanna be able to contribute and help. So don't treat us like we're incapable of doing anything because we do want to do what we can. And sometimes that means letting us help even though you know it's going to make us feel worse. <laughs> this is something that my husband and I have struggled with where I really want to do something to help him and he knows that that thing maybe will make me flare up a little bit or won't be good for me, but sometimes I just want to be able to help. I want to feel normal for a day even though I know that it's going to flare me up Sometimes I just want to feel normal. So allow us to help, even if it might make us sick, allow us to make our own decisions. Yes, try to have accommodations. Yes, try to understand us, but then let us make our own decisions and don't try to control what we do because the truth is we can't control anyone except ourselves. Another thing you can do is ask us about our illness. 
I think a lot of people just ask, how are you doing? And it's just very general, but I think diving deep into questions like that you really want to understand our illness. So asking questions like, well, how were you first diagnosed? And well, what are some of the symptoms that you experience and how does it affect your day-to-day life? And really showing that you care because that's something that I really love is when I love obviously talking about chronic illness because it's a huge part of my life. I deal with it all day, every day. And I have a YouTube channel where I share all the things. I could talk about it all day. (laughs) And so it's really fun for me when someone does seem interested in it because it's me, it's my life. And most people look at chronic illness like it's a burden and it's this extra, this is huge problem. And when people look at it like, wow, that's so interesting. I want to hear more. It, it kind of lightens the burden, if that makes sense. It makes it feel more fun. It makes it feel more like I have a purpose and it makes me feel appreciated for just dealing with chronic illness. So I love when people ask me questions, not even in the way of like letting us complain to you, but learning more about it, like becoming more knowledgeable about our illness. Um, Something that really means a lot to me. I've had this happen a few times is I've told someone about my illness and then they'll come to me, you know, the next time I see them and say, hey, I learned about fibromyalgia. These are the things that I learned. And that, it just feels like they care. It feels like they are trying to understand me. And so I love when I can tell someone has gone the extra mile to Um, learn more about my illness, whether it's just asking me questions or learning things on their own. I think that's really helpful and kind to do for someone who's suffering. One thing I'd warn against is trying to relate to them um, because if you've never lived with a chronic illness or in chronic pain, it's hard to, it's hard to relate to that um, because it is so different than like we talked about having the flu that never goes away. It's hard to imagine that if you're not actually going through it. Because when you think of the flu, you think of a short-term thing. You think of an event, of of a moment. And for us, it's our whole lives. It's it's a part of us all day every day. And so sometimes when people try to relate to you and you say, "Yeah, I have chronic fatigue." And they say, "Yeah, I'm so tired all the time too." because I'm running around with my kids and I have this work project I'm working on. It's like, not that those feelings aren't valid because they are and I, I'm i not discounting them. Everyone has things that are hard and everyone has fatigues and problems. But I think trying to relate in that way is not very helpful. It kind of feels like you're discounting the person because for us it's, not just, yeah, we're running around with our kids, so we're tired. It's, I've done nothing and I'm tired all day, every day. So really trying to understand them, but not forcing the relation, not forcing trying to relate it to something that you've been through, I think can be really helpful. And the thing that I would recommend doing when you are dealing with someone who lives chronically ill is to show them that you love them. Just tell them you love them as much as possible. And that will mean something different for anyone, for for everyone. Like it, some people might really benefit from you saying, I love you a lot. Some people might just want to hug. Some people might want to complain to you and just have you listen to them. But show them that you love them and tell them as much as you can that you love them and you care about them and be honest with them. Be honest and say, I don't know what to do for you. I want to help, but I can't. I'm trying to help and it seems like it's not working. So I just think coming at it with love and honesty is the best way to approach these kinds of situations. I mean, all situations. Can you ever go wrong with honesty and love? It's the truth. I mean, be kind, okay? If you think they are exaggerating and over complaining, Maybe be careful about being honest about (laughs) certain things, but you can still be honest about those things and say, hey, I'm not understanding your illness. Can you explain more? Can you share more with me? Can you 
take me to your next doctor's appointment so I can understand more. And coming at it with love, you always make the right decision for you. And then my last advice is to allow them their own thoughts and feelings. This is how I like to end all of my videos about dealing with other people is allow them to have their own thoughts and feelings. Allow them to maybe be annoyed at you today because you didn't do it right. Because here's the truth, my friend, you're never gonna do it right. And it's not because you don't love them. It's not because you're not trying. It's because you are not them. And because we are all different human beings, we are all gonna do it wrong for other people. <laughs> That's just how it is. And so allowing them to have their own thoughts and feelings can be the piece that you'll need to get through another day when maybe you think you did everything right and they are upset at you and telling you you didn't do it right. Just allowing them to think those thoughts and allowing you to know that you did the best that you could that day. Or maybe you didn't do the best you could and you love yourself through that so that you can do better tomorrow. So that is my final thoughts with you. Do your best and love them, but allow them their own thoughts and feelings and take care of you. I know we've all heard the analogy of the oxygen masks, uh, but I'm just gonna say it one more time. When you're on an airplane, there are oxygen masks and if you need to use them, the advice is to put it on yourself first and then help those around you. If you are trying to get the oxygen mask on your kids or your friends or just the random stranger next to you before you put it on yourself, you are going to die. <laughs> and then they probably will as well because you couldn't get it on them fast enough. But if you put it on yourself first, then you are in a good place and then you can help them. I probably totally butchered that analogy, but <laughs> it's a really good analogy and you need to take care of yourself first. That means sometimes you leave them when they are really sick. I have told my husband this, there are times where he wants to do too much for me and he is neglecting his own mental health. And then how is he supposed to help me if he is not in a good mental space? So I've told him, if you need your space, even if I'm grumpy and I've had a bad day and I tell you you're doing it wrong, go do your own thing and leave me. I will be okay. I can figure it out. I am an adult. I can do this. But sometimes we just have to take care of ourselves first. <laughs> so make sure you are in a good place. And once you're in a good place, you will be able to help that person much, much better. So never to neglect yourself in trying to help your friend or family member who is sick. All right, that is everything I have for you. I hope that was helpful. If you have any other tips and tricks for anyone who is dealing with someone who lives chronically ill, will you leave them in the comments below? Make sure you share my channel with any of your family and friends who live chronically ill so that they can learn how to live a wonderful life while living with these extra challenges. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope these tips helped you. I will see you on my next video.